Hello everyone and welcome to another Advanced Higher Maths um, Differentiation Unit uh, video lesson. In this video lesson we're going to take a little look at how to find the second derivative of a function defined implicitly. So you know how to find the, um, the first derivative, if you've watched the previous video um, you should know how to find the first derivative of an implicit function so this builds on, on that. Um, so success criteria, what we're looking for, um, really it's just taking you through the process kind of thing, really the, the, your starting point, you, you want to be able to identify the easiest line of the first derivative to work with. Um, know that terms containing dy by dx need to be differentiated using the product rule and um, you need to, towards the end, you'll have to sub back the first derivative. And simplify the answer fully. So it's quite a, quite a fair bit of algebra and, and simplification uh, involved in this. So let's take a wee look at the process. Let's have a wee look at what we mean. So here we've got uh, an implicit function x squared at 2xy equal to 1. And what we're looking for is the first and second derivatives of that function. So we know how to find the first derivative. Let's start with that. Okay, so we've got x squared, we'll be able to differentiate that. Let's have a look at the, the rest of the terms. 2xy though, that'll need to be differentiated using the product rule. So I'm just going to do the, the prep work for that first. So u, the first part will be 2x, v will be y, u dash will be 2 and v dashed will be the derivative of 1y, so dy by dx. Okay, so our first derivative then is going to be 2x plus uv dashed, so 2x dy by dx plus vu dashed, so plus 2y equal to 0. Now, remember from the last video, the process is to rearrange this now and get dy by dx on its own. There's only the one dy by dx term, so there's no common factors or anything like that needed. We'll just get straight to 2x dy by dx equal to negative 2x negative 2y. And then divide by 2x and we'll get dy by dx equal to negative 2x, negative 2y, all over 2x. Now, there's a common factor of 2 there in the top, so we can just cancel the whole thing down and, and have minus x, minus y, all over x. Okay, job done. That's the first derivative. So that's not new. That was from the last video. That was um, fairly straightforward. Let's get the second derivative. Now, you can't get the second derivative unless you've got the first one, all right? Um, hopefully, that would have been obvious. Um, you know, you have to differentiate and differentiate again. So, when we're finding a, the second derivative for an implicit function, you must go through that process first and get your derivative. Now, if we were to find the second derivative, you would normally differentiate the first derivative. But if you look at the first derivative, which is here, that's quite tricky to differentiate. If we want to differentiate that, we're going to have to use a quotient rule, plus couple that with the fact that we're differentiating implicitly, um, then that, that is going to become quite a tricky um, thing to differentiate. So what we prefer to do is go back to the first easiest line of your first derivative, okay? So this here is the easiest line of the first derivative. Now typically, although not exclusively, the first line of working for your derivative, so the first line of maths where you put down your derivative, of the implicit function, that will usually be the easiest line. There may, however, be 
a line just after it or just after it again where you've got a simplified version where at least the, the, the like terms have been collected. That would usually be the line to go for. Um, but my first line of my derivative there in that pink box doesn't have any like terms to be collected. So we're going for we're going for that. Now the reason why we go for that term is because if I differentiate that line of working, then I'm just differentiating three terms: two x, two x dy with the x, and two y. Whereas the purple box down here, my final line of working for the derivative, involves having to use the quotient rule. Um, and bearing in mind the numerator could have products within it, and you're going to have to use the product rule within the quotient rule and things. So you're much better off going to a line that looks like this so that you've got a sum of terms to differentiate. So let's carry on with this. Now if you look at the terms closely, 2x we can differentiate that no bother. 2y we can differentiate that no bother. However, 2x dy by dx, how do we differentiate a term that looks like that? Well, when you differentiate dy by dx, you're just going to get d2y by dx squared. You're just going to get the term for the second derivative. Um, but you must treat it like a product, because that is 2x times the derivative. So times the first derivative. So that's really, if you like, 2x times this here. You see? So you have to, what you have to do is... Um, bear that in mind and treat, as long as you treat terms with dy by dx in them as a product and then when you come to differentiating dy by dx then you just re you just put down d2y by dx squared. So that's the line of working we're going to work with. Okay, let's get this sorted. So 2x is fine but let's do the prep work for 2x dy by dx. Right, 2x dy by dx. So let's pop down what we're going to do here. So u is going to be 2x. V, v is going to be dy by dx. u dash to be 2. v dash to be d2y by dx squared. Okay. So if we now come to finding our second derivative... Then what we're going to have is the derivative of 2x, so that's just 2. Then the product rule for 2x dy by dx, so uv dashed is 2x d2y by dx squared. Plus 2 dy by dx. And then differentiate 2y, so plus 2 dy by dx again equal to zero. So we've got d2y by dx squared and dy by dx is to deal with. But these two here, these two are, are like terms. 2dy by dx plus 2dy by dx must be 4dy by dx's. So tidy this up before we move on. 2 plus 2x uh, 2x d2y by dx squared plus 4 dy by dx equal to zero. Okay. So what we want is this to say d2y by dx squared. We want to say the second derivative equals. So what we'll have to do is in the same way we do with the first derivative, get all the terms not containing d2y by dx squared over to the, the right hand side. So we're going to get 2x d2y dx squared equal to negative 2, negative 4 dy dx. Okay. Now, we, we always want the second derivative um, expressed in terms of x and y. We don't want the second derivative expressed in terms of x, y and dy with dx. So what we do is we say, well, hang on, we know that this equals um, negative x, negative y over x from above. That's the, that's the first derivative in its most simple form. 
So if if that's the case, then that is going to, that there is going to get subbed in here. Okay. So we now have two x d two y by dx squared equal to negative two negative four lots of negative x negative y over x close bracket and then it's just a, it's a lot of tidying up and simplifications from here so um really just take it in stages the sort of the sort of general flow of things that i do is i i leave dealing with 2x or dealing with this division step until the very last um kick and um, what i do with what i've got on the right hand side is i try and multiply out any brackets um, any algebraic fractions, I'll try and make one single fraction where possible, all that sort of thing. Just try and get everything in, in its easiest sort of terms to work with. So I'm going to start by multiplying out that bracket so that we get 2x d2y by dx squared equal to, I don't know what's happened to that there, that should say minus 2 minus 4. Yeah, that's funny that. Huh? Um, so minus two, and then minus four times minus x. That minus four is going to multiply into the numerator there. So we're going to get positive four x plus four y all over x. Okay, and that's the brackets multiplied out. Now what we want is to combine these two. And combine the minus 2 in the algebraic fraction. So what we get there, again, is 2x d2y by dx squared equal to, now, minus 2 expressed in x's is minus 2x over x plus 4x plus 4y all over x. Okay, so to save keep repeating lines of work, and what I'll do is just hit hit equals and just type, uh, combine that just now. So we'll just add the numerators up. Minus 2x plus 4x plus 4y is going to come to 2x plus 4y all over x. Okay. Now, I'm now going to divide by 2x. So we get d2y by dx squared equal to 2x plus 4y all divided by, well, there's already an x in the denominator, so, so when we divide by 2x, we're going to get 2x squared. All right. Simplify your algebraic fraction, so common factors out the top, 2x plus 2y over 2x squared. The 2s cancel, and our final answer is x plus 2y over x squared. Okay. So, I, I would I'd be hesitant to, hesitant to say it's straightforward because the algebraic, the simplification part of it is anything but. Um, at times, depending on what your derivative is. Um, but as a process, not too difficult to sort of get, get, get a hold of. Yeah, get your first derivative and then it's just these new rules for the second derivative. Yeah, differentiating dy with dx terms becomes d2y with dx squared. And any terms containing dy with dx, like this one, need to be differentiated using the product. Okay. So, let's have a little look at one more, right? So, for this video, we'll have a wee look at one last example. So, this time it's x cubed plus y to the power of 4 equals 5x. Now, there's a, a, a reason, a particular reason why I want to do this one with you, um, which you'll see why. I'll, I'll tell you why when I get to that. Um, so we need to find the first derivative. Start with that. Right, let's have a look at the terms. Give it some thought before we put pen to paper. X cubed, we can differentiate fine. By the power of 4, we can differentiate fine. And 5x, we can differentiate fine. So on first look, no need for product rules or, or things like that. Let's just bash ahead and get our derivative. So we're going to have 3x squared plus 4y cubed, don't forget dy of dx, equal to 5. Okay, 
So 4y cubed dy with the x equals um, 5 take away cx squared. And then all of that divided by 4y cubed. So dy with the x is 5 take away 3x squared all divided by 4y cubed. Okay, now if you look at that, that doesn't tidy up. That, 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 sorry, it doesn't simplify any, there's no common factors. So that was as easy as it gets in terms of finding the first derivative. So the second derivative. So the first thing you have to decide is what line of working are you going to start with? I don't know why my, my screen's playing up for that. Right, let's find the second derivative. So as I say, you have to start with what line of working from the first derivative are you going to work with? Right? So, let's get that back in. Right. Now, hopefully, I think that the, the easiest line here to work with is probably the top one really probably wouldn't make any difference whether you worked with the top one or the bottom one. I suppose the advantage to working with the bottom one is it's already got the dy with the x term sort of isolated on its own there, so it, it really wouldn't matter. I probably will, though, in thinking um, of it, probably will just go for this line here. Okay. Um... This line up here is probably going to have more of a more of a rearrangement to it because of the three x squared terms on this side. Whereas if it's on the right hand side of the equal sign before I find the second derivative, then that's a term I won't have to shift over. So yeah, probably will go for that line of work in there. So let's we look at the terms four y cubed dy over x. So that will need to be differentiated by the product rule. So let's do the prep work for that. Um, 4y cubed dy by dx. So we've got u equal to 4y cubed, v equal to dy by dx. And the reason why I wanted to show you this example in particular is because at this stage, we didn't have this in the last example, but u dashed is a y term. So this is going to be 12y squared dy by dx. So it's important that you remember every time you differentiate a y term with respect to x, you need to put dy by dx with it. So I wanted to show you that um, side of things in particular. V dashed, we talked about in the last example, be d2y by dx squared. So the second derivative will be the product rule on the left hand side of the equal sign. 5 differentiates fine and so does 3x squared. So Let's get the product rule part down on the left hand side. So uv dashed, so we'll have 4y cubed d2y by dx squared. And that's going to be equal to, it, well it's not going to be equal to anything. I need to do the second part. So we need to have vu dashed, so that is going to be 12y squared, so plus 12y squared. Now. If you look at this multiplication, you've got 12y squared dy by dx times dy by dx. So that can be represented as dy by dx squared. Okay? So that's different from d2y by dx squared, by the way. Right? dy by dx is the first derivative squared. d2y by dx squared is a representation for the second derivative. So don't confuse the two. Um, and that's going to be equal to 5 differentiates to nothing, take away 6x. Okay. So, we've got a job in our hands now um, to sort of fix this, haven't we? So, what I'd probably start with is moving the term in dy by dx over to the right hand side. Right? So, I'm going to leave it with just the second derivative term on the left hand side. 
and so now that that's equal to minus 6x minus 12y squared dy dx squared okay and we know from the first derivative that dy by dx is equal to this expression here so that has to go in that bracket squared so we'll have I'm just going to come down here so we'll have 4y cubed d2y by dx squared equal to minus 6x minus 12y squared and then dy by dx all squared all right so that will be 5 take away 3x squared divided by 4y cubed all squared Oof, right so remember the, the sort of flow that i said before in the last example i'd start with brackets and then make things um into one algebraic fraction and and so on and so forth so that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to have 4y cubed dy dx equal to minus 6x minus 12y squared and then what i'm going to do is write this fraction squared out as the numerator squared so 5 take away 3x squared squared over 4y cubed squared okay um, and then from that what we're going to have is 4y cubed dy by dx equal to negative 6x negative 12y squared and then we're going to have 5 yeah so we'll have if we square out the numerator we'll have 25 square the first term multiply the two together so that'll be minus 15x squared double to be minus 30 x squared and then square the last term and we'll get positive 9x to the power 4 okay all divided by and then 4y cubed squared is going to be 16y to the power of 6 all right so it's getting there all right it's definitely getting there 4y cubed d2y by dx squared I should have there 4y cubed d2y by dx squared equal to negative 6x now what I'm going to deal with here is I'm going to cancel down my 12y squared and my 16y to the power 6 okay now both of these can be divided by 4 so that's going to become 3 that's going to become 4 and then y squared over y to the power 6 is going to that's going to cancel out and we're going to be left with y to the power 4 on the denominator so what this now boils down to is minus 6x take away 3 and um, lots of 25 take away 30x squared plus 9x to the power 4 all over um, 4 y at the power 4 now we're ready to multiply this bracket out okay so we'll now get 4y cubed bear with me <laughs> 4y cubed d2y by dx squared equal to negative 6x and then it's minus 3 times that bracket so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write a plus sign here and multiply that bracket out by minus 3. what i could i could leave it as a minus sign and multiply out the bracket by 3 um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to write th write it with the plus sign there. So we get minus seventy five, okay, plus ninety x squared, minus twenty seven x to the power of four, all over four y to the power of four. Okay, so that's the brackets now all dealt with. Well, let's make it one algebraic fraction <laughs> right now if you think about minus 6x with y to the power 4 um, 
as its denominator, then this would have to be multiplied top and bottom by y to the power 4. So that would be the common denominator. Okay. So if you imagine that term. Uh, oh no, sorry, I need 4y to the power 4 in the denominator. Sorry. So if I need 4y to the power 4, let me just rub that out again. Again. So if I need um, 4y to the power 4 on the denominator, then the top and bottom has to be multiplied by 4y to the power 4. Remember that can be written as over 1, so 4y to the power 4. So that term is actually now going to become 4y cubed, d2y dx squared, equal to minus 24 x y to the power of 4 over 4y to the power of 4 plus negative 75 plus 90x squared take away 27x to the power of 4 all over 4y to the power of 4 so now we can combine them so say writing that out again what I'll do is I'll just write that that is minus 24 x y to the power of 4 minus 75 plus 90x squared minus 27x to the power of 4 all over 4y to the power of 4 okay now nearly there right one more line of working um, really now because we've got everything we need we've got brackets multiplied out we've got it written as a single fraction now i'm going to divide by 4y cubed and say my second derivative d2y dx squared right here we go minus 24 xy to the power of 4 take away 75 plus 90x squared Take away 27x to the power of 4, all divided by, now, not 4y to the power of 4, but 4y to the power of 4 times 4y cubed, so that's 16y to the power of 7, okay? 4 4s give you the 16y cubed times y to the power of 4 is y to the power of 7. Now, about the only thing you could do to make that any simpler is there is a common factor of 3 in the numerator, so you could pop that out but I reckon that's probably not all that necessary. So you can finish it off with 3 bracket, negative 8, xy to the power of 4, take away 25, plus 30x squared, take away 9x to the power of 4, all divided by 16y to the power of 7. Okay, got there. All right, so it's quite a it's quite a long process, yeah. Right, a lot of that algebra you need to really take as many lines as you feel you need. I know some of you will probably be able to do that in fewer lines of working because your your head can hold a lot of the things quite accurately. And um, some of you'll need to take more lines of working. You just have to be really patient with a lot of those simplifications. And as I said, look at the solutions or um, let me know if you need any help folks okay so quick quick summary um, of the process there we're looking at finding the the second derivative of an, implicit, uh, of an implicit function we always find the first derivative we identify the easiest line of the first derivative to work with and from that we move on uh, we f start working through each term the terms involving dy by dx need the product rule um, and terms that are being differentiated, uh, like the dy by dx term uh, differentiated, is d2y by dx squared. Okay, doke. So hopefully you found that video useful, folks, um, and probably a bit longer than anticipated, but thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.